Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a banned colored prototype deck featuring a ton of the new cards from the Brothers War and the goal of this particular list is to flicker our various prototype creatures. Take Combat Thresher as an example can be played in its prototype form for two and a white in which case it's a 1-1 with double strike that when it enters draws a card but if we were to flicker or blink the Combat Thresher with one of our many effects take the Hallowed Respite as an example it would come back in its larger form in this case a 3-3 with double strike that will also still draw a card when it enters and in the case of Hallowed Respite specifically would also get an extra plus on plus one counter so now on turn 4 we could already be staring down a 4-4 with double strike that drew 2 cards total so that's a pretty good deal so we've got a ton of these different prototype creatures that we can play for relatively cheap and then hopefully flicker them to get their bigger version as well as maybe an enter the battlefield ability so at 2 mana there's the autonomous assembler can be a 2-2 with vigilance for one mana we can tap it and then put a plus one plus one counter on target assembly worker which includes itself and then if we were to flicker it it turns into a four five with that same ability of course can also just be played for five mana in the first place and then there's the rootwire amalgam can be a two drop in green a two three and then for three and double green we can potentially sacrifice it to create an xx colorless golem artifact creature token where x is three times the amalgam's power so if we played it for two mana then on turn five we could have a six six with haste but if we played it for 5 mana or happen to flicker it, it turns into at least a 5-5 five five, and then the token can turn into a 15-15 15 15 with haste that can potentially one hit KO with the opponent, especially when paired with Steel Seraph, which can be played for 1 and double white as a 3-3, three three, has flying and says at the beginning of combat on our turn, target creature we control gains our choice of flying, vigilance or lifelink until end of turn, so that's a way to potentially give the large golem token evasion by giving it flying with our Steel Seraph, a lifelink also very helpful in a racing situation and vigilance can also have its moments and then if we were to flicker the seraph it comes back as a 5-4 or we can simply play it for six mana to begin with then we've got some additional three drops that benefit from being flickered simian simulacrum a 2-1 that when it enters can put two plus one plus one counters on target creature we control so it could just be a 4-3 by itself but we could also put those counters on maybe a double strike creature like combat thresher which can make a more use out of the extra counters can also maybe put it on an amalgam so if we sacrifice it we get an even bigger golem token afterwards and then the simulacrum also has unearth but just flickering the simulacrum to get more plus one counters every turn could be quite nice and then we also have two copies of Loran of the Third Path, which gives us a bit more interaction, can destroy an artifact or enchantment when it enters a battlefield on a 2-1 with Vigilance, can also tap it, and then each player gets to draw a card, can maybe come in handy if we're about to miss a land drop. And then our final prototype creature is a Boulder Branch Golem, can play it for a 3 and a green, in which case it's a 3-3, three, three, and when it enters we gain life equal to its power, so it can gain 3 life for starters, but then when we flicker it, it comes back as a 6-5, gaining 6 life, and potentially even more if it gets an extra counter from the Hallowed Respite. So an excellent creature to flicker over and over again, especially with a Golden Argosy, which is one of the main flicker engines, if you will. A 4-mana 3-6 legendary vehicle says whenever the Argosy attacks, exile each creature that crewed it this turn and return those creatures to the battlefield tapped under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Entering tapped is a pretty big drawback, means we won't be able to block with our larger prototype creatures the turn they come back, but it is a way to keep enabling cards like the Golem or Thresher to draw cards and even cards like Simulacrum to get more counters or Loran to destroy additional artifacts or enchantments and the crew cost is only one and we're allowed to crew with more than one creature so we can potentially exile several creatures at once. And then we also have two copies of the Mysterious Limousine, which is pretty useful as it can exile opposing creatures and just be used as removal on a 4-4 vehicle with a crew cost of 2. But every time we exile a new creature with a Limousine, the previous ones come back to the battlefield. So we could also exile our own creatures with Limousine, and then when the Limousine attacks on the following turn, we can potentially bring them back in their transformed forms, or potentially re-enable an Enter the Battlefield ability. So the Limousine has that additional utility as well. 
And then besides the Limousine and Argosy, we also have four copies of Hallowed Respite, just a two-mana sorcery, which will flicker one of our creatures putting an additional plus one plus one counter on it, and can also be flashed back for three mana, so we can potentially use it twice on turn five already, and can also be used on opposing creatures, in which case they won't get a plus one counter, instead they will enter tapped, so that's a way to potentially get rid of a blocker for a turn, which can also come up. And then we also have the channel ability on Touch the Spirit Realm, which is another way to flicker a creature at instant speed, so it can also potentially catch the opponent off guard, and we can also cast it as a 3-mana removal spell, exiling an opposing artifact or creature until Touch the Spirit Realm leaves the battlefield. And to tie everything together, we also have three copies of Sten Paranoid Partisan, which can enter the battlefield on turn two, naming Artifact, giving all our artifacts a one mana discount, so that will make it much easier to curve out and cast multiple prototype creatures in the same turn. And we can even exile Sten himself for one a blue and a white, in which case it will re-enter the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step, so we can maybe chump block a larger creature with Sten, and then still save it by flickering it in the opponent's turn. And then when it re-enters, we could also name a different card type other than artifact, although that's not going to come up unless we want to maybe flash back a respite for two mana instead of three. And then our mana base includes headquarters, which is important mana fixing. We've got the new brush land as another new pain land from the Brothers War to complement our, our darker wastes. And then most of the other dual lands, as you can see, are white, since we do need to double white on turn three for Steel Seraph. And then just one forest, Boseju, Soaring City, and Taiganjo as additional channel lands to give us a tiny bit more interaction. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. This is going to be a mulligan, I think, since we only have green mana. This is better. So, want to keep Respite. And then I'll probably hang on to Double Thresher to draw more cards over Simulacrum. Even though it could be said that Simulacrum is a good combo with the Thresher, as we can put more counters on a Double Strike creature. So maybe I keep one of each. Opponent on a red deck. And turn one Kumano. So hopefully we can pick up a two mana play here. So we don't fall too far behind on board. The Forge Chanter pointing towards a lots of instants and sorceries. And there's the Assembler, so at least we get to make a turn two play. Could already respite next turn, although might want to flicker the Thresher instead. Although it does still die to a lightning strike, unless we put a counter on it, which I guess would put it out of range. Opponent with a Reckless Impulse finding two lanes. And uh, I'm not opposed to trading for etching, just to kind of slow down the opponent a little bit. Then play Thresher, hope it survives, and then we can respite it. Sure. Ooh, nice. Uh, Loran would have been able to take out the enchantment. Now doesn't have any targets. So we'll play Thresher and hope they don't kill it. It's going to be another Forge Chanter. And an attack for two. Now it is a little bit sketchy to have to go for the Hallowed Respite into two open mana, so now that we drew Steel Seraph, that's probably the safer play. Try and give Thresher flying. Hit for two. And then next turn, I'm probably ready to Respite, could even flash it back to transform both of our creatures. Right, gonna be an adversary with Kicker, but there's no spells to get back other than Impulse. So at least they're not getting back a burn spell. Swift Spear plus land. So we're taking six since we can block the chanter. Okay, so step one, probably attack. And then give the uh, Seraph itself a lifelink. And then I can respite twice. That's probably the best play overall. Because if we flicker a creature, of course, it's going to have summoning sickness. 
can see what we draw first. Soaring City. Flashback on Seraph. And then next turn we're threatening lethal. Can give Thresher flying. So that's 14 in the air. So your opponent's gonna need some burn spells here to get through our creatures. Thresher, 4 power, double strike means it can easily block something like an adversary without any repercussions. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, that's a powerful turn transforming two of our prototype creatures onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's kind of slow, no 2-drop. Land's also coming into play tapped early on, but then it does kind of pick up with some powerful 3-drops, so I'll try it. Also missing a flicker effect, but we get to draw with the Thresher, and Steel Seraph, just a powerful individual card, even if we don't flicker it. And there we have the Golden Argosy, so that's going to be our flicker engine, if you will. For now, probably fine to play Thresher. Opponent could be on a more controlling strategy, which could be packing some uh, counter spells and sweepers. And a make disappear hits Thresher. Alright, so we're in for a grindy game here. Which probably doesn't favor our creature deck. Surge engine, the opponent's win condition, luckily dies to Loron. So probably want to just take care of it now before it gets out of hand. And then Loran plus Argosy could shut down all future copies as well. Opponent passes. And um, not sure if I even want to attack with Loran. Does have Vigilance, it dodges Emperors minus two, but they could of course just make a Samurai to trade. And the ability to flicker it could be quite valuable. So let's see if Argosy resolves. Gets scorned. Now we can attack with a uh, 2-1 Vigilance. Not sure yet if it benefits me to draw cards here with Loran. Since her opponent also gets to draw. Ooh, I see Haughty Jin. Well, we do need to find answers to Haughty Jin, And I don't have one in hand, so I probably have to draw now. Can try and resolve another Argosy. Although her opponent could still have a 2-mana counter spell. A limousine that could technically exile Hadi Jin. So do we try that or do we try Argosy? Argosy, if I play my land first, we can at least pay for another make disappear. And if they negate this, then they won't have negate for limousine. So I think it's worthwhile. Okay, Argosy resolves. No attack and we'll pass it back. Going to be Rafine's informant to connive. Discarding a one with the multiverse. Okay, so our opponent trying to cheat that into play as well. Good thing Loran could also destroy it. So they might be playing with Invoke Justice to get back the powerful enchantment from the graveyard. Take two for now. And then I can try to play double Steel Seraph here. Or we could try for a Limousine. I think double Seraph makes more sense. Could even play one for six mana. But if the Argosy works out, we'll be able to transform both. Alright, Ertai Scorn, at least now our opponent's tapped out. So we're in the clear. I guess they could still have an Essence Scatter. They don't. And then no reason to flicker Loron here. So we'll just crew Argosy. Give Loron flying. And attack for five. Okay, so we'll have a Transformed Seraph. It will enter tapped because of the Argosy, so it can block Haughty Jin just yet. And then the Limousine will potentially be able to exile it as well. So I'm no longer interested in drawing with Loran. If our opponent gets back one with a Multiverse here, 
We can answer it by flickering a Loran. So we'll see what this next turn brings. Bodant is looking at their graveyard. And repair and recharge instead. Yep. So what spell can they cast for free here? If it's something expensive, it could be game over. It's going to be another repair and recharge to get back Surge Engine. Okay. So our opponents cast our free spell for the turn. Surge Engine we can also get rid of with Loran. And the Limousine will clear Hadijin if that stays back on defense to maybe block Argosy. But our opponent just hits us for 8. Alright, that's not too bad. So we can gain some life here with a Steel Seraph and found another one. Yeah, I can only cast both if I draw with Loran, which I don't know if that's a great idea. We would also have to hit an untapped land. Yeah, I think the plan is Limousine, Exile, Haughty Jin, Loran destroys one with the Multiverse, and then Steel Seraph can give itself Life Link. So I guess what we could also do is play Limousine, Exiling a Loran with a trigger on the stack, Crew Limousine, and then Flicker Limousine with Argosy. So it comes back and exiles the Jin. Is that better? It's pretty much the same, I think. So, yeah, we'll play a Limousine. Exile Haughty Jin. And then Crew Argosy with Loran. And attack. Okay, so there's still a surge engine to worry about, but Loran can eventually take care of it. Next turn, maybe just cast Seraph for six mana. Faithful Mending to draw and discard. And uh, nothing too threatening in the graveyard, outside of the one with the multiverse. And if our opponent keeps Surge Engine and Informant back to try and double block Argosy, we could just uh, give Argosy flying with a Steel Seraph. Opponent hits for 8 instead. So yeah, we can play double Steel Seraph. Now our opponent is at 8, so we could just crew Argosy, crew Limousine, and keep Loran as an attacker. And then we would hit them for 9 damage to kill them. But let's assume they had a little bit more life to work with. Then I think the ideal play would be to just crew the Argosy with one Steel Seraph and Loran. Play another Steel Seraph to crew the Limousine, and then give both Limousine and the Argosy lifelink to gain 7 and then uh, bring back Loran to destroy the Surge Engine, and one Steel Seraph will transform, and that uh, will keep us in a pretty safe position. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems decent. We've got our various creatures and our Respite to flicker them. Probably lead with... Hmm, it's actually interesting, since... Can maybe use spare mana to pump our assembler as well. I think I'll play an assembler first. And then next turn I can play Amalgam Grow Assembler. And then maybe turn after Respite. Opponent on a Virtuoso deck, so that can hit incredibly hard. But for now we can attack into it. And then I could keep the assembler back to block. Can grow up to a 3-3 on defense, essentially. Might be better than getting in one extra point of damage. Since we'll also have Amalgam as an extra blocker. So we can present quite a bit of power and toughness here. And then ideally we can get to 5 mana to transform Amalgam into a, a larger token. Try to double block, see what happens. Right, Defiance for two extra power. Opponent can connive. So 
So they would need another trick here. And they have another Blessed Defiance. Okay, that's quite painful. So seven power, so even if I pump Assembler, it's not going to make a difference. And our opponent's got a pretty large Virtuoso, but at least they had to use a few combo tricks here. And we can get back on the board with Amalgam and Assembler. Could also reset the Virtuoso's counters with Respite. Although they seem to have a protection spell in place. And yeah, if we can get a 15-15, it's probably going to be large enough to block Virtuoso. Storm Chaser Drake to diversify their threats. And Virtuoso can hit for 6. Problem is, if our opponent has a slip out the back, they can also respond to the Hallowed Respite on my own creature. Although then it will at least come back with a plus one counter. So step one is probably to attack. I think we just let damage happen since I might cast and flash back Hallowed Respite. So what if I use Respite on the Virtuoso, force them to use a protection spell, and then I can still flash back on my own creature? I guess I would rather do it first on my creature, make them use the trick here, and then reset the Virtuoso potentially. Alright, that works. So we have a 6-6 six, six now. And do I want to flash back Respite on Assembler? Or I can just play Amalgam grow the current Assembler. And keep Respite as another way to potentially reset Virtuoso later when the opponent's tapped out, or who knows what else. Right, Homestead Courage to pile on more counters on Virtuoso. Too bad to Respite is a sorcery, otherwise we could like Chum Block and then flicker our own creature to soak up some damage. And now a counter on Drake as well to draw. Vigilance also means we can't like surprise kill them with a 18-18 token here. Okay, just a Drake attacking. So let's see here, this can only be activated as a sorcery. Opponent probably has a trick up their sleeve, so what to do? Could just try and respite the Virtuoso, see what happens, force to use a protection spell. It's not a great use of my mana, can still play an assembler alongside it, but then the opponent's gonna end up with an enormous Virtuoso basically. So maybe I do transform Amalgam, hope there's no fading hope, and then the token can maybe start attacking. So just 18-18 attacks. Drake in front, and maybe a slip out the back on the Drake. Okay, so that draws and soaks up the damage. But that's one slip out the back gone at least. And now a bypass, uh oh. That can certainly threaten lethal. Well, if they attack with both, Virtuoso can be blocked at least, so it doesn't kill me. So, chump with Amalgam, I guess. Double blocking is not gonna help. And now we do have 21 damage coming up. So yeah, I guess we'll attack and see what happens. And yeah, it looks like our opponent maybe miscalculated, thinking the Virtuoso would be unblockable. But yeah, can only become unblockable if it attacks alone. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's a little bit awkward in that we can't actually play Sten on turn 2, since it's forest coming into play untapped, and that doesn't cast our blue-white card. And then we also don't have a real flicker effect yet. So I think that's probably reason enough to mulligan. This I can try and keep. And then one amalgam can go. Could also 
maybe get rid of a 3-drop in case we miss a land drop, we can still play a second Amalgam. But if we miss a land drop, we're probably in a lot of trouble anyways. And then double Thresher to draw more cards to help find Flicker effects. Now we've got an Assembler we can play on turn 2 as well. Against a Red's aggressive deck, it seems. Could go for Amalgam. Yeah, I guess I'll play an Assembler. Unlike the Amalgam, it only has two toughness, so it can be taken out by a play with fire, whereas Amalgam needs a lightning strike. And our opponent actually cycling Ancestral Anger on our creature just to draw, since they seem to be missing a creature themselves. But it does mean they have quite a bit of removal in hand, so Strangle to take care of it would have killed our Amalgam as well. Okay, line is good, and I think I go for Thresher. Keep cycling through the deck. If we find a land, we can maybe double spell our two drops next turn. And as we suspect our opponent holding a lot of burn spells. Okay. If we ever get to transform the Amalgam against the Reds, they're gonna struggle to deal with a 15-15. So that's our primary game plan here. But our opponent found some nice ones off Impulse. Kumano to pump Swift Spear. So I think I'm still in favor of double spelling. Festival Crasher gets a counter, Anger to pump Swift Spear. So a double block could work out poorly for opponent had a burn spell, but it's going to be another Ancestral Anger instead. So Swift Spear now hitting for 8. At least her opponent's down to one card in hand. And since it tramples, I think I'll take it. Alright, Hallowed Respite was a great draw. So how do we want to do this? Could play Simulacrum and then Respite Simulacrum, or maybe play Thresher and then Respite on Thresher. Although there's a small risk of like a play with fire killing it. If I flicker Amalgam and Assembler, then we'll have a 5-5 and a 4-5 on defense. That's pretty great too. Although a 4-4 double strike could be even better. And it also draws. Doesn't seem like our opponent's holding any instants. So we'll try this. Okay. Gonna stay back, just need to survive, and then Respite will take care of the rest. Etching could be annoying with Simulacrum. If it gets exiled, we cannot unearth it, but we'll see how they plan to get past a 4 4 double strike for starters. Another Crasher. That's fine. And no attacks. Okay, so could try and Respite the Amalgam to grow it. Could use the Amalgam now to make a 6 6 with haste. Although I think we want to go bigger, but I think we start here. If they have a lightning strike, so be it. Okay, 6-6 six, six achieved. And then now... I guess we go for Simulacrum. Put even more counters on Amalgam. And I guess I also forgot about the extra counter from Respite, so now if we activate... It would actually be a 24-24 uh, token. Opponent going all in since they're running out of time here. Okay, so how do we block? I guess uh, Crashers are the most threatening cards. Trade Assembler for Etching. And then I could die to a Swiss Peer that goes unblocked, so I'm probably going to throw Simulacrum under the bus even though it's going to get exiled. Right, opponent just channeling Crucible and concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems promising. Turn to Sten, lets us cast Assembler and Amalgam for one mana, potentially. And then we've got uh, Respite and Touch the Spirit Realm as kind of flicker cards. Opponent Black Green, got a backup Sten. I wouldn't mind a third land. And name Artifact. It's 
can be an eccentric farmer, so a graveyard deck. And there's still Seraph, which I could also play. I think I still prefer double assembler here. And then next turn they could both attack, threatening to become 3-3s. Three so they can attack past the farmer. Opponent's got two of them. Okay. Our Dark Oasis is nice too. So, yeah, we have quite a few options. I think I still like attacking with the Assemblers. Now our opponent could double block one of them, in which case that's fair play to them. This is not going to work out. And then we want to keep green mana untapped to still play Amalgam. And then it's potentially time to flicker next turn. Old Stick Fingers. It's going to be pretty large. Milling double Lurgoif, so Stick Fingers a 9-9. Nine, nine. Well, might have to just exile that for now. And then hit for a healthy 10 damage. And we can also clear a blocker with Hallowed Respite, as it will come back tapped. So we could just present Lethal here. Old Rothstein mills Flash Gorger. Does make a 1-1 one -one token, so... We would need an untapped plant for Respite to be lethal now. And a Soul Transfer to Exile an Assembler. Fair enough. Okay, so... We have quite a few options once again. Let's say I play a 2-mana Steel Seraph, and then Respite the Amalgam. Then next turn I could transform Amalgam into a 15-15, and give it flying with a Seraph to basically one-hit the opponent. That seems decent. And then for now, play Steel Seraph first. And give the Assembler flying, I guess. Could also go for lifelink if we were worried about our life total. But this seems like the most fun play. And I guess I keep forgetting about the extra plus one counter here, so... Actually gonna be an 18-18. So on the board, I guess it would already be dead to just giving Amalgam flying and hitting them for 9. Opportunist to potentially draw. I guess I could have even uh, pumped the assembler for one more. But now we keep it back on defense for what it's worth. And Eaten Alive deals with Seraph. Okay, so we lost our flyer. Can still use Respite to just get rid of the insect token. Ghoulish Procession can start making Decayed Zombies. Probably fine to play a Thresher first for 2 mana. And Diganjo the draw can be channeled for 2 mana thanks to Sten being a legendary creature. So what if I just attack with everything here? And then, depending on the boards, maybe a Respite second main. Can channel Igancho and grow the Assembler. So that would leave my opponent at 2 life with an Opportunist. Yeah, that's probably good enough. Okay, so all our creatures are lethal. Opponent's got one actual blocker, two cards in hand now. Can they recover? It's gonna be a go for the throat killing stun. 
since that was the only target for it. Another advantage to playing all these artifact creatures is that go for the throats, a lot less impactful. Still only one blocker, and we can also get it out of the way with the Hallowed Respite. Might play Sten naming Sorcery to give it a 1 mana discount. They are searching through the graveyard, maybe they've got a reanimation spell. Zombie attacks, take two. And our opponent passes. Yeah, I mean, going Sten into Hallowed Respite seems fine. Could also Respite twice. Maybe that's better. Clear the Opportunist first. Attack, see what happens. And then we can still Respite. Second main if needed. Alright, looks like that does it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got all the flicker effects, missing the prototype creatures. So this one's a bit of a risky keep, but uh, the upside if we find the prototype creatures is that we already have plenty of ways to flicker them, and I can always use Touch the Spirit Realm as a 3-mana removal spell. So I'll give it a shot. And then our mana base is going to be pretty good too. Turn to Informants, okay. Maybe a Reanimator type of deck. As it gets to Connive, maybe discard an expensive spell that they're then looking to bring back on turn 5. Nope, just a Plains Limousine, another Flicker effect. I'll hang on to a Channeled Touch the Spirit Realm, although I doubt I'll need it. It's going to be a Circuit Mender, which can... Still draw when it leaves the battlefield, so exiling it with Touch the Spirit Realm, not the best value play. And I was really hoping to find a creature here. I think I still pass. And then Argosy on 4, maybe a Limousine on 5. As our opponent plays another Circuit Mender. Yeah, let's play Argosy and then cross our fingers that we can find a prototype creature next turn. Revelry just to draw. Take six. And there we go. Okay, so play Golem, crew Argosy, and that's gonna very quickly stabilize us. Getting three and then gaining. Six when it comes back. And then we can do some fun things with a limousine as well. There's a Hallowed Respite, so they'll need to get rid of a Golem if they want to try and kill us. For now, take four. And another Revelry just to draw. Oh, nice Steel Seraph. Can even play it for 6 mana if we'd like. If I play it for 3, I would keep Igandro available. Not sure how relevant that's going to be. But uh, yeah, I would be probably transforming the Seraph with the Argosy anyways. I think it's still fine to play it for 3. And then just give Golem lifelink with the Seraph as opposed to flickering it, so we can also start dealing more damage. Opponent chumps. And gets to draw off Circuit Mender. Alright, and then we keep Instant Speed Channel of Touch available in case your opponent tries to play a board wipe. We can still save one of our two creatures. And the Might Stone and Weak Stone can try and take care of one of my two creatures here, giving minus five, minus five. And we'll save it. So yeah, opponent can be a ramping into some expensive cards, maybe a portal to Phyrexia. Could be in our future. 
as we draw another Argosy. So could play a Limousine just to get rid of one of the opponent's blockers. Let's say I Hallow to Respite one of them too. Then I can't quite present Lethal, but we're getting close. So is that a play? Next turn our opponent will have 7, potentially 8 mana. Portal is 9, so at least they won't be able to play that one just yet. So yeah, interesting spot. Definitely gonna play the Limousine. And then I think just exile the Informant here. And then I'll just attack with Seraph and Golem, giving Golem flying at this point. And pass it back. So even if there is a board wipe, we'll still have two vehicles to try and apply more pressure. Another Mightstone and Weakstone to kill Seraph. Yeah, I could have used Respite last turn on Golem just to make it into a 7-powered creature to potentially present lethal right now. Uh, as it stands, I'm only going to be able to deal 6 damage at most. So yeah, probably just attacking with Golem and uh, take it from there. Could have also tried to exile my own Golem with a Limousine to kind of save it. I think I will Respite just to make it into a 7-powered creature. Could also crew a Limousine and then basically flicker the Limousine with Respite so that I can exile my own Golem and the opponent gets back their Informants. But what does that accomplish? It's just a way to kind of hide the Golem from a Sweeper effect. Now we'll pass. Your opponent's got 8 mana now. Looking at the graveyards for Repair and Recharge, bringing back the Mightstone and Weakstone. Surprised they didn't float some mana first, but probably doesn't make a huge difference. It's gonna draw 2. And looks like they're out of answers here. So yeah, can play Sten to Crew Limousine attack, but just a Golem by itself is gonna be lethal. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing blue mana for a Respite. Can play Amalgam and flicker it with Touch the Spirit Realm. Although ideally, flicker Thresher instead. I'll try it. We can go without blue mana for a little bit. But a third land's what we really need for Thresher. There we go. Put on blue whites with a Ledger Shredder. And uh, sure, I'll still play... Amalgam here. Next turn could also touch the Spirit Realm to Exile Shredder if we deem it necessary. It's gonna be a Comot Research, so our opponent on a blue-white aura deck that's gonna try and protect one threat. Okay, so I could try and exile the Shredder, although chances are they have a protection spell to uh, make sure that doesn't happen. I could Busage with the Comet Research itself, which they're less likely to be able to protect. Although it would be ramping the opponent, which I don't love. So maybe for now just play Thresher, play our own game. At some point I can also Respite the Shredder so the Comet Research falls off. But for now I think I prefer developing my own mana. And then something like a Limousine could also be effective. Because if the opponent tries to protect the Shredder, then the Limousine won't have anything in exile, and when it attacks on the following turn, it can exile without any issues. And while our opponent does get to draw two cards, at least the Shredder doesn't hit incredibly hard yet. Now a security bypass as well. So that starts to connive. And Iganjo could also be a potential answer to the Shredder. So that might just be the play here. Attack, keep up Iganjo, play tapped headquarters, and then next turn Limousine. This way we also kind of waste the opponent's mana that they're keeping untapped for potential protection spells. Okay, 
as opposed to playing Touch the Spirit Realm. Could also channel Touch the Spirit Realm. Although at that point, it's probably better to channel Iganjo. Another bypass. I guess the downside now is that if they just cast another spell, they can connive with Shredder and potentially put a counter on it to survive the 4 damage of Iganjo, so it doesn't have to be a way to give it Hexproof, for instance. So maybe channeling Touch the Spirit Realm is still a little bit safer. And then next turn, try Limousine. So our opponent's going to slip out the back. They don't get to hit with the Shredder here, so they don't get to draw off Comet Research and Bypass. So now it is still phased out, so Limousine can't uh, try and exile it, but we could either exile our own creature with Limousine, or we could try and Respite, even Flashback Respite, and grow both of our threats. So, step one, probably attack. And then we'll have to reconsider. So if I play a limousine with a plan of exiling my own creature, I would exile Thresher, then next turn I could crew, attack, try and exile Shredder, and then only if I exile the Shredder would I get back Thresher. So that feels a bit sketchy if they have another protection spell. So I think I prefer just going for a Respite, Flashback, Respite at that point. Try on the Thresher first. 4-4 four, four double strike. We get to draw. And uh, don't think I can squeeze in stun here. Could also name Sorcery if we're trying to flash back for Spite. Okay. So next turn I could just activate this, make an 18-18 with haste. Alright, point's going to destroy Evil the Amalgam, fair enough. So now we don't quite have lethal and our opponent does get to see a lot of cards with the Shredder. But now maybe the plan of playing Limousine is back on the menu. Opponent discarding a Shore Up, so they definitely have more than enough ways to protect their Shredder. Okay, so step one, probably attack with Thresher. And then I could play Sten and the 4-mana Limousine, although that will also enable Connive. Opponent takes it, falls to 2. So now I could also consider just going for a couple smaller creatures, which would all be lethal. Still would enable Connive. Are we in any danger of dying next turn? Let's say they connive, put two counters on each, then they would still need another pump spell to quite get there. And I don't think Igancho is going to be incredibly helpful, since they can likely get a buff for toughness. I uh, could always try to respite the Shredder to reset its counters and get rid of the auras. Although again, they likely have something like a Shore Up or another Slip Out the Back in hand. So... At least with a limousine, we're adding another threat to the board, which we can crew next turn. So we'll play Sten. Name Artifact. And we'll see if this works. It's going to be another shore up. Okay, opponent is down to one card in hand. So they're not super likely to be able to connive on both. And next turn I can play Amalgam for one mana. And potentially even transform it into a 6-6 with haste. Although just crewing the limousine could be enough. So Shredder hits for 7.
They could still have shore up to untap it. And a Homestead Courage discarded as well. Times two. Okay, so everything's going to be decided in this next turn. Yeah, it's going to be kind of tricky. Could try and Hallowed Respite to tap down the opponent's Shredder. Then play Amalgam to crew Limousine. And then I would have three lethal attackers. That's probably worth a shot. Not sure if drawing with Thresher makes a huge difference. Thresher also doesn't crew Limousine. Alright, step one. Respite Shredder. That works. So that comes back tapped. Then play a one mana amalgam, I suppose. Opponent gets to connive, but now if they drew into a protection spell, it's too late to protect the shredder. Crew limousine. And our opponent's going to need a ton of interaction here. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Very close game against the blue-eyed connive deck here. Okay. So yeah, good to see our prototype deck in action. It's probably not going to be a very competitive deck is my guess, since it is still very weak to board wipes. So any control strategy is going to have a field day playing against this. But against other creature decks, especially ones where the opponent's creatures are unlikely to grow larger than our bigger prototypes, we're going to have a good time. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.